Shalom, everyone. This is Dr. Durr. I'd like to welcome you back to the Word Power broadcast, the Hebrew Word Power broadcast. Today is Lesson 6. Today we're going to talk to you from the topic. Now, this is a very interesting topic. You're going to love it. It's entitled, The Future Prophecy of Yahusha HaMashiach, the Mashiach. Subtopic, the Ruach Haggadesh is resting upon him. And I'm going to go through some scriptures here and show you that Yah has a son. Stop letting people tell you that Yah never had a son. It's prevalent. It's all throughout what we call the Torah, the Tanakh, or the Old Testament, and the Brit Hadashah, uh, people call the New Testament, which is the renewed covenant. It's in there. So I want to say all praises to the Most High Yahuwah. He who breathes life, behold the nail hands, his son Yahusha, the Yahuwah is salvation, the Ruach Haggadah, the set apart spirit, the comforter, the one who leads us into all truth. Praying that all is well with you and your family. Praying you will be obedient and that you will accomplish all that the Most High Yahuwah has given you to do. I'm excited about this word that Yah has given me. Go with me to the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter. The 11th chapter, the whole 11th chapter of Isaiah is talking about how the Messiah is going to come. How he's going to stabilize his righteous government. How he's going to gather all the outcasts of his people from around the four corners of the earth. How he's going to establish us. How he's going to be there with us. How he's going to bring everything into the obedience of his will. The cow's going to be straight. The snakes are going to be right. The children can put their hands in the snake pit. It won't bite them. Uh, the lion going to lay down with the lamb. All of this is in the 11th chapter of Isaiah. I want to read it, but I can't read it because of time. So I'm only going to read two scriptures because this is where my focal point is. And you're going to understand as I go through this. I want you to get go with me to the book of Isaiah and get uh, the first verse. The 11th chapter and the first verse. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Yeshia, which is Jesse. And a branch shall grow up out of his roots. And Ruach... Yahuwah shall rest upon him. Catch what I just said. The Ruach Yahuwah shall rest upon him. The Ruach Chakma and Benai. The Ruach Esha and Jevora. And the Ruach Da'ath and the Yira of Yahuwah. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yahuwah. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Now, you're probably saying, well, I never heard that before. Some of you may have, some of you may haven't. I'm reading from the Sefer or the Sefer Bible. Uh, it gives you the Hebrew, breaking it down. We're going to go through each one of these in a series of lessons. And you're going to understand what each one of them mean. The Ruach Yahuwah, the Ruach Chakma, Benai, the Ruach Esha, Jabora, Ruach Dabma, and the Yara of Yahuwah. Some people ask me, why don't you just teach on... Uh, some of the basic Hebrew words, and why don't you talk about what's going on in the land? Why don't you talk about the slave ships? Why don't you talk? But I have talked about the slave ships. I talked about the feast days. Go look at all my lessons. You'll see that there. Yah has given me an assignment to teach the knowledge of helping our people to stand. Yes, you can get all that information. You can get all that knowledge and get all that understanding about the feast days, about this happening, about that happening in the land. That's wonderful. But you have to know how to live afterward. That's what's wrong. Most of us don't know how to live. You got to live this life out. You have to still walk it out. You are a believer of Yahuwah. And he expects a certain lifestyle from you. How are you going to uh, live the lifestyle and you don't know how to live the lifestyle because you don't have anything in front of you? So my assignment is to cover the holes that all these other great teachers are teaching, they're covering a lot of information. And if it's great teaching out there, why do I want to keep repeating something that's already been said? I want to cover the areas that others are not covering, and it's going to be beneficial to us. I want us to go to, I'm going to go into now the lesson, as I stated. We're going to go to the first one, the second verse. He, uh, Isaiah 11 and 2, it says, And the Ruach Yahuwah shall rest upon him, the Ruach Chakma. So today, we're going to deal with the Ruach Yahuwah, the spirit of Yahuwah. The definition of Ruach is wind, breath, mind, Ruach breath, wind of heaven, breath of air, and Ruach, as that which breathes quickly in animation or agitation. We have scriptural references. I'm going to go through these scriptures now. We're going to go through Genesis, the first chapter, starting at the first and the second verse. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. 
and the earth was without form and void. The darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Ruach Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. I'm going to show you that I'm not just quoting anything, not just saying anything. I'm going to show you where the Ruach Yahuwah was in action. So you just heard that the Ruach uh, Yahuwah moved upon the face of the earth and began to do the work that Yah spoke out of his mouth. Now the next word is uh, uh, coming from Genesis, the sixth chapter. Let's go to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Starting at the third verse, I'm going to be reading this from the Amplified, but I'm going to plug in the Hebrew words. Then Yahuwah said, My Ruach shall not strive and remain with man forever, because he is indeed flesh, sinful, corrupt, given over to sensual appetites. Nevertheless, his days shall yet be 120 years. So the Ruach HaKadosh is not going to always be with us because we have been living in a sinful, corrupted manner. And Yah said, that's not going to happen. My spirit is not going to be put through uh, such wickedness. I'm, I'm not going to allow my spirit to remain in vessels that operate in wickedness. So Yah said, I'm going to remove my Ruach. So you see the Ruach, Yahuwah is there. Now we're going to go to the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter, the book of Numbers 14. At the 24th verse, it says, But my servant Caleb, because he has another Ruach with him, to about the Ruach HaKadosh, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein he went, and his seed shall possess it. This is talking about uh, Joshua and Caleb, how they were the only two that stood for Yah. When it came down to spying out the land, coming back with a good report, when the other ten had an evil report, these were the only two that stood. And he, had, he said that Caleb had another spirit. He wasn't like everybody else. He didn't have a defiled, fearful, satanic spirit in him, but he was walking in the Ruach of Yah. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome right there? Now we're going to go to the book of First Samuel. We're going to go to First Samuel 10. 1 Samuel 10. It is going to the 6th verse and the 10th verse of that same chapter. Let's see what it says. Verse 7 to 10, it says, And the Ruach of Yahuwah will come upon thee, and shall prophesy with them, and shall turn, and, and shall be turned into another man. He was talking about Saul, King Saul, how Saul was chosen to be the king over Israel because they did not want uh, Yah to be their captain. And Yah said, I want to be your general, I want to be your captain, I want to be your king over you. I don't want you to be like anyone else. I want you to uh, be uh, different than other nations. But as you know, our people, which are stiff neck and hard head people, we didn't want that. We wanted to be like other nations. Give us a king just like the other nations. And Yah said, okay, I'm going to give you a man. His name is Saul. So Yah turned him into another man by allowing his Ruach, Hakadesh to come upon him. That's what should happen to us when the Ruach Hakadesh gets on us. We should become different people, different men, different women. Not walking around spooky, not walking around goofy, but walking around with the fear of Yah abiding in our heart, mind, and soul, and treating people according to the Scripture, the set apart Scripture. Not being nasty towards one another, not being evil, because love does not function in that manner. Who is love? Yahuwah is love. If Yahuwah is love, he gives you a description in 1 Corinthians 13 chapter what love does. Let me, I'm just say a few of them. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always hopeful. Love endures all things. Believes all things. Are you catching what I'm saying? So Yah is there telling us by way of his Ruach HaKadosh, there's a certain way we should live a set-apart life, not doing what we want to do, not walking the way we want to walk, not thinking the way we want to think. No, according to the ways of Yah. That's why Saul became another man. But we know later on in life, Saul disobeyed Yah, and Yah took his Ruach from him, and a demon spirit attached itself to Saul, and Saul became vexed in his spirit and messed up in his mind because he went against Yah. Yah didn't want him there in the first place. Yah was all about, uh, I mean, Saul was all about stuff. David was all about the ways of Yah. What did David say when he got in trouble? Don't take your Ruach from me, your spirit from me. What did Saul say? Don't take the kingdom from me. See, there's a different spirit. Saul didn't want the kingdom to leave. David didn't want Yah's Ruach to leave. Which one was more important? The kingdom or the Ruach? David said, I want the Ruach. 
That's why even though David went through what he went, went through, did what he did, Yah said David was a servant after his own heart. What happened to Saul? He lost his kingdom to the one called David, which is Jesse's son. And during that line and in that lineage, here come Yahushua. We told you about the 11th chapter of uh, Isaiah, how Yahushua came on the scene, coming from that same line, the line of David, from Jesse. Hallelujah, or Yeshia. Uh, the seventh verse says, 1 Samuel 10 and 7, And let it be, when these things, signs are come upon thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee, for Yahuwah is with thee. He's talking about Saul. Eight verse, And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgad, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice, sacrifice of peace offering. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee, and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, Yahuwah gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. The Bible said that every word that Samuel spoke, none of his words fell to the ground. You got a bunch of false prophets out here today prophesying stuff. Ain't nothing coming to pass. Just a bunch of hoopla, a bunch of game, a sham. No, when Yah speaks, he speaks def definitely. And he speaks on purpose and he speaks on time and it shall come to pass. Here's another one here, uh, the tenth verse, the last one I want to go to. And when they came together to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. They met Saul, and the Ruach of Yahuwah came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass when all that knew him before saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, what is this that is come upon the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? They were blown away. And one of the same place answered and said, But who is his is their father? Therefore it became a proverb. And Saul also among the prophets. Remember there were prophets. Y'all had chosen prophets that he had that prophesied. When you had that gift in the boat you, that was your assignment. That was your lot. That's who you were. Uh, Saul was of the tribe of Benjamin. They were not operating in the prophetic. Israel already had their prophetic people. Hallelujah. His own chosen prophets that he had picked. And here comes Saul. His, he had turned to another man by way of the Ruach HaKadosh. Hallelujah. The spirit of Yahuwah was upon him. That's what we're talking about. So he was among Saul. What did Saul do? He got around those prophets. He got the uh, functioning with those prophets. Next thing you know, Saul was prophesying just like the prophets. Why? Because the Ruach HaKadosh came up on him. Hallelujah. And don't let people tell you that you can't prophesy today. That's a lie. If y'all come up on you, you have the Ruach HaKadosh living on the inside of you now. Now that you have accepted Yahushua as your king, as your savior, by way of Yah, by way of his Ruach HaKadosh, you serving Yah with all your heart. His son got you into the kingdom. You can come uh, to the kingdom by accepting the son, Yahushua. But uh, Yahushua is leading you and always pointing you back to the Father. He's led and driven by the Ruach HaKadosh. Hallelujah. So we see today that the Ruach HaKadosh, the Spirit of Yah, when he comes on a person or an individual, guess what happens? That individual will change. They will become a better man and a better woman, not in the fleshly sense, but in the spiritual sense, operating in the ways of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. They will operate in his ways. They will think like Yah. They will study his Torah. They will be a praying people. They will be a people that's keeping his Shabbat. They will serve him faithful unto the end. I love you all. Remember, Shalom.